Shalom, beloved. Shalom, beloved. Barack a thumb. Let me adjust this camera a little bit. <clears throat> Shalom. I'm going to go ahead and delve into it. Shalom. Barack a thumb, you howl. Barack a thumb, you howl, shy. Barack Thang Yahweh. Barack Thang Yahweh Shai. Call Halayla Yahweh. Bah Hashem Yahweh Shai. Bah Hashem Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. No mercy. No mercy. So there's a fierce right hand spirit of judgment and justice that the Lord is putting on his men. And this fierce fury is going to be poured out upon the wicked. Those that have contaminated our water source, the air we breathe, our baby food, our bread and cereal, our meat, our minds with false universal doctrine, A, B, C, D, E, F, G agendas, and doctrines of Satanism, witchcraft. So this freedom of religion <clears throat> was intended to slither its way in and open the floodgates for gross abominations blood sacrifice, and all types of stuff that I can't even go into. It's shameful to even speak about. So the Bible says, let's get it. <clears throat> I need to use those scriptures tonight, not my opinion. The Bible says, thou didst show them <laughs> no mercy. Somebody post James 2 and 13. Let's go to Isaiah 47. <clears throat> the book of Isaiah, chapter 47. Let's go to verse 6. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient <laughs> hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So the wicked are not going to be shown any mercy. And on this side, there is a two-thirds set of Israelites that are in bed with the wicked, that are going to suffer the same fate, <coughs> that have been paid off. Let's go here, Brother Chazak, Ban Yahawda, the book, the book of James, chapter 2, verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoice against judgment. So the wicked are reserved unto the day of judgment. Let's go here. <clears throat> the book of Job, chapter 21, verse 30, that the wicked is reserved. Let's go to Job 21 and 29. 
Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. So the, the wicked are created for vessels of destruction. They are vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, pursuant to Romans chapter 9. Vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. So there's no mercy to the wicked, no mercy to the Edomites. Our food is contaminated. Our water is making us sick. The air we breathe is make, making us sick. Our babies are getting sick. Our minds are being contaminated and polluted with all types of perverseness. Our children's educational system is corrupt. Our educational institutions are corrupt. Our re religious institutions are corrupt. <clears throat> so there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Brother Jim Escobar Adama, Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So they were made to be destroyed. That is that sand castle that the little boy makes and then crush just to show his power, his wrath. The little boy playing on the ocean shore creates a sand castle and then just demolishes it a vessel of wrath fitted for destruction. You Edomites are vessels of wrath tailor-made to be eliminated from off the face of the earth. Your seed is going to be wiped out from off the face of the earth. No mercy. No mercy. Brother Boyan, Yashawala, Job 21 and 30 that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he have done? So many of us have lost loved ones because of this wicked, corrupt system built on witchcraft, artificial preservatives, artificial additives, all types of abominable elements that go back to ancient sorcery that have been added to our daily supplements, our diet, and our health is off. Our mindset is out of balance. So we are spiritually out of tune with the Heavenly Father. So the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Somebody post that, please. Brother, servant of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, Jeremiah 51, verse 8. Salvation is suddenly fallen. Excuse me, those are spirits messing with me. Jeremiah 51 and 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take bomb for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. So the Edomites are associated with this wicked kingdom that creates a structure to make us sick and go off that is built on idols. So these, the food we eat are sacrificed unto idols. Our worship and rituals are dedicated to false gods. So it is a system of snares and traps so she is full of enticing snares and traps. This is a wicked woman, the daughter of Babylon. She is a harlot. She is a witch. So her doctrines lead to sickness and mourning and, de and death. Brother Bunyan Asherala, Isaiah 57, 
verse 21. There is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. Exactly. So that peace, <laughs> they, are, they are stripped of mercy. So they have no peace to look forward to. A nice soft landing for their children and their children's children. Money saved up for college. Buying more real estate and more Epstein Islands. It's over. Now they want to shut down the internet. NASA is talking about a day of darkness or a day of a internet apocalypse because this truth hurts. It is the Edomites that are destroying the earth. It is the Edomites that are contaminating the water, the air we breathe, polluting the minds of our children. It is the Edomites that were given the blessing of the sword that are going about the earth, making the inhabitants of the earth sick. It is the Edomites that are killing in mass number. World War I, World War II, the Civil War, the Korean War, the Viet or Vietnam. It is the Edomites that are making the world mourn. <coughs> let's go here. So there's going to come a time where the Lord is going to open up and let loose of Obadiah verse 21 and let loose of Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 14 and 15. The Lord is going to let loose hunters pursuant to Jeremiah 16 and 16. No mercy. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Some of you are going to be cleaning the sidewalk with a toothbrush in your mouth with one arm and one leg. That's going to be the judgment of some of you, the wicked. Let's go to Psalms 26. <clears throat> no mercy, no peace. Book of Psalms, chapter 26, verse 9. <clears throat> Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hand is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. So this also gets into wicked niggas. The two-thirds, like the purple people eaters, that have obtained a net worth of 150 million from teaching lies. So you're not going to be shown mercy on this side, you purple people eaters. The Bible says, those are my enemies that would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. In Luke, I think it's 19 and 27. The book of Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. This has not happened yet. So the Lord is putting a fierce spirit of vengeance on his men. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, the Philistines have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred. So the modern day oppressors are comprised of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The Philistines dwell in Babylon. Ammon dwell in Babylon. The Assyrians, they have taken root and reside in Babylon. The Egyptians in Babylon. The Greeks and the Romans are ruling in Babylon, the great, a conglomeration of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Brother Gabar Ayash, Isaiah 33 and 18, thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? So terror is being meditated. 
in the minds of the Lord's elect men. No mercy. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. <coughs> Let's go. Psalms 26 and 9. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. So you got two-thirds of Israelite men of the house of Saul joined unto these wicked crimsonites or cave beasts. Let's go to Psalms 50 and 2. What else? You men that know the truth but are not teaching, there's blood on your hands. Those are mine enemies that would not that I should reign over them. Bring hither and slay them. So if you're a chimp with a damn pencil in your ear with thick Coke bottle glasses on, just watching the videos for entertainment, you have to pay a debt with your blood for being a lazy, slothful man. Okay? There is no emotions here in the men that are teaching with passion. There is no sentimental connections to you weak, scared men. None. Let's go to Psalms 50 and 2. So you are bloody men, and your blood is going to be required for that day, the day of judgment. Let's go to Psalms 50 and 2. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. So this truth, <laughs> this truth is glowing on the Lord's elect that are exemplifying characteristics of the Heavenly Father. By doing his will, he's saying, they are my sons. They are my people. Now they're starting to look like me. Now they're starting to walk like me. That's why the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. It's talking about doing his will. So he's saying, those are my sons. That's my boy, so to speak. Okay? Looking down, smiling, preaching his word, and doing his will. Not you niggas, though. You're still sitting back being a status quo guy. Psalms 50 and 2. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, the most high have shined. <clears throat> Let's show you what this is talking about. Who is the most high shining through? It's going to Matthew 5 and 16. Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So the Most High is saying, that's right. That's my boy. Go ahead and drive this message home. Cross the finish line and score. That's my boy. So his face, which is the light of the glorious gospel, is shining on his men. Brother Chazak Ban Yehawada, Ecclesiastes 8 and 1 who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. So then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. So you cave beasts afflicted us and called us three-fifths of a man. Second-class citizens. So you cave beasts got hell to look forward to. Not a soft little nest egg and a soft landing for your little cave beasts that are being up and coming to poison our food and contaminate the goddamn air. They're not going to get a chance to finish making our lives miserable on this earth. So your little cave beasts are not going to be fully groomed to grow up to be full-blown devils. They're going to be destroyed. There is not going to be a soft landing for you little cave animals. So the men of the, the house of Israel is supposed to be teaching. If not, you are an enemy. 
of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Psalms 50 and 2. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God have shined. Now let's go back to Matthew 5 and 16. It's talking about the works of building the Lord's temple, his monument, his church, the Zion, Zion. Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's read about these cave beasts being multiplied. Brother Yoakanan, Shalom, beloved. Beautiful scripture. Job 27 and 14. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. So no more juniper roots for you, little devils. Eating juniper, juniper roots for meat. Okay? It's over. Juniper salads and juniper seasoning and casseroles. It's over. Juniper roots for meat and red, bloody, raw meat. It's over. For the GMS Amoff, your eyes from your howler. Halawan, beloved. Rakata. <coughs> Second Maccabees 1 and 28. Punish them that oppress us and with pride do us wrong. Plant my people again in thy holy place as Moses hath spoken. Woo, we got to read that again. So the trees of righteousness are being planted. Not wicked roots and niggas wearing a damn a gold grill in their mouth, smiling with a damn joint in their ear and a hat turned backwards. You niggas got to go. You got to go. <coughs> Brother GMS Amoff, your eyes from your howder. Second Maccabees 1 and 28. Punish them that oppress us and with pride do us wrong. Plant thy people again in thy holy place as Moses hath spoken. Beautiful. <coughs> So what has been will be again. The congregation of the Lord's saints are being gathered together, gathered by saints unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So you can't be the same grimy old man coming into this congregation. You can't be the same grimy old woman coming into this congregation. It's holy, sanctified. Matter of fact, let, let's get that. Let's go here. Matthew 12, verse 30. Let's get here first. Oh, we got to go back to letting this light shine. Oh, I'm excited. Matthew 5 and 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So this is the Lord's lighthouse, his temple, and the light of the glorious gospel is emanating from this glorious construction. Let's go back to Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So the Lord gets his glory through his witnesses, which are his saints, his elect. So us men are charged with a responsibility to continue to push the plow, to continue to work and build, which means edify. Go to Matthew 12 and 30. <clears throat> the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. This connects beautifully to where? Ezekiel 34. Well, the false prophets 
are scattering the Lord's flock. The wicked is scattering the Lord's flock. You see? So there is no gray area with the Heavenly Father. He's not going to take half in the truth and half out. One foot in, one foot in the world. It doesn't work that way. You either is or you ain't. Let your nay be nay and your yea be yea. <coughs> so those that are teaching false doctrines are scattering. Those that are deviating from the straight and narrow path is scattering the flock. Let's go to Psalms 50 and 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So we are commanded to make our bodies a living sacrifice. Putting ourselves on the front line for, <coughs> for this word. This is talking about the men that are leading in the last days. Of the Gabar Ayash, Jeremiah 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. So here it is, we're trying to lie down in green pasture. The Lord's doctrine. And we got wicked Israelite leaders teaching false doctrine. Ain't no Jacob's trouble. There is no sea hip. Go ahead and take the serpent's piss and put it into your body. And they've already lost about 27 uh, uh, members. So you're either gathering the Lord's sheep or scattering and driving them away with lies. Therefore, saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. So you got wicked jakes that are not going to be shown mercy on this side. They are joined unto the wicked. So they got a caveman's hand in their hand and they're joined hand in hand, and they love their slave master. <coughs> Brother, servant of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Jeremiah 11 and 22. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. Where's this ever-loving God that's handing out chocolate chip cookies and little tulip flowers to put in our ears? That's most of you Israelite men. You got a little damn, what is that called when you go to the high school prom? <laughs> He's bugged out ass wheat cakes. What is that? <laughs> a croissant, not a croissant, a croissage. Bugged out. So you waiting on this fake Lord to pass out croissages. Okay, <clears throat> let's go back to Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So these are daily sacrifices. Yeah, a corsage, whatever the hell it is. These bugged out ass jakes drinking too much estrogen. You got to avoid those estrogen shots. They're hazardous to your health, Jake. Then you're growing extra lumps on your chest and you confuse. Jump into this doctrine and gird up your loins like a man. Tired of the games. Let's go here. So this is a daily event. Not sitting back on the beach with two big Palm leaves blowing over us. <coughs> Let's go to Psalms 68 and 19. The book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord 
who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. So this is a green pasture. The sheep eat daily, okay? So we're being daily fed. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures, not amongst hood rats and in dubs and bugged out jakes with their hat turned sideways and smoking a damn black and mild. Well, this is a holy gathering. It's sanctified by the word. It's cleansed by divine wisdom. Let's go back, let's go back to Psalms 50 and 5. A book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice daily. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. So this heavenly wisdom, it formulates a counsel. So whenever you have a court case in session, where are my witnesses? These are the elect men. Can I get a witness that are saying this is the man that made not God his strength? This is the man that contaminates our drinking water. This is the man that's using ancient ingredients that connect back to sorcery and witchcraft. This is the man that puts pollutants into our bloodstream and the air that we breathe. Is this the man? So you have a counsel of a prosecuting attorney or a prosecuting counsel, which are the prophets, his witnesses. Let's keep going. So this is a heavenly congregation. Psalms 50 and 6 again. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Let's go to 2 Ezra 15 and 20. So there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 20. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Libanus, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. So the Lord is cursing Babylon. So just like he caused our enemies to fight against each other, he's going to cause the inhabitants of Babylon to fight against one another, brother against brother. Left against the wet, left against the right, conservative against liberal, democratic against republican, capitalist against communist, the east against the west. So he is dividing and conquering this wicked social construct built on witchcraft. The Bible says, woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies. Second Ezra 15 and 20. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Libanus, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Done to who? His chosen. The entire earth has profited and benefited of the Lord's people falling, the fall of Jerusalem. So we were sold to the nations, not for our destruction, but to be subject unto payments. Brother Jim Escobar Dama, Mark 3 and 23. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. So here in America alone, you have a, a strong, 
a strong line of separation and division amongst all types of philosophical lines and viewpoints. You got the ABC agenda. You have the pro-Biden, pro-Trump. You have the Bible Belt around the uh, Eastern Coast and Southeast America. And in the Midwest, you have the breadbasket of farmers that are against this, the, the synthetic operations that are going on, replacing the traditional seed with a futuristic synthetic seed. So there's all types of lines of division, which started with the preaching of the word that is exposing all these different devices of the devil. So this kingdom is divided amongst social, economic, political, and religious lines. And philosophical, science versus tradition, the traditional families are being disrupted and picked apart, are being destroyed. The traditional roles of men and women and children has been made ambiguous. So all the foundations of the earth are out of course. <coughs> Egyptian against Egyptian. Second Ezra 15 and 21. Like as they do, yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God, my right hand shall not spare the sinners and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. No mercy, no mercy, no mercy. So if I'm not mistaken, James 2 and 13 says, he that have shown no mercy shall receive no mercy. The Tic Tac hats, have shown no mercy. The damn quest for fire inhabitants, Google that quest for fire and click on images. Those are the Edomites. They know who they are. So the inhabitants of quest for fire have not shown any mercy. Neither has the false prophets. There's blood on your hands, false prophets, and the slothful men with no works. There's blood on your hands, you lazy, wicked niggas. The Lord said, bring that wicked servant unto me and slay him before me. Why, certainly, my Lord. <laughs> okay, through enthusiasm, I might want two swipes. Okay, just to make sure that wicked Negro won't move again. Lazy. But for master, you put in 40 years of dedicated service, being a good old happy step and fetch it, like a janitor with some damn a ring of keys around his waistline. The moment you speak the Bible to him, he don't want to hear it. A good old step and fetch it, a good boy. That's most of our men today. Good boys. But they won't put a single strand of energy towards the ministry. So those are his enemies too. Let's read this again about these sinners, which starts with the house of Israel. Judgment start with the house of Israel. Second Ezra 15 and 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. If you're not teaching, there's blood on your hands, nigga. There's blood on your hands and those that are contaminating the air, the water that we drink, and the food we eat, and contaminating our minds with false philosophical doctrines of men or doctrines of devils. <clears throat> Second Ezra 15 and 23, the fire is gone forth. Second Ezra 15 and 23, the fire is gone forth from his wrath and have consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners like the straw that is kindled. 
So this earth is going to go up in flames. Wicked Jake's broiled lamb chops. Wicked KB's broiled pork loins. Okay? Unclean pink devils. It's coming. So the wicked and the rebels are going to be roasted together. You'll be joined hand in hand with your lover. Those that have destroyed the earth. Those that make us sick every day. Those that made us three-fifths of a man and second-class citizens. You'll be joined with your lover, your master that made Jake's breeders. There's a story of one Jake that's got over 200 kids, and he died in 1958. He had to sleep with his mothers, his mother, his sisters, his daughters, and other women of the plantation. So you Edomites got a lot to pay for and we got Jake's talking about they're going to be shown mercy. No, they are not. Or the Yawakanan, Ezekiel 3 and 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood, say what? But his blood will I require at thy hand. So if you're not warning your brethren daily, that means you don't love them. Okay, I'm just telling you, don't get mad with me. I didn't make you a chimp that's lazy or a damn sloth trying to crawl the, the street, taking three days across the damn street. It doesn't take that long to, to do a, a 10 minute video or hit the highways and byways. Let's read this again about these, these slothful jakes smoking damn Cuban cigars with black lips. Bug out, brother, you're walking on. Ezekiel 3 and 18. <clears throat> I love this scripture. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Bring him hither and slay him before me. Certainly, my Lord. The water for asking. Ezekiel 3 and 19. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wicked way, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So if he turn from his wickedness, or if he don't turn from his wickedness, then you've done your job. We have done our job. <clears throat> so the bloody men starts with the house of Israel. Those that ain't doing a damn thing and wicked men that are teaching lies. You got that wicked group called spiritual art. Now they're teaching Esau, Edom, is not that man of sin. And these same men taught that we can smoke weed. The, the sword of the Lord is full of blood. The blood of chimps, goats, gorillas, orangutans, and chipmunks. The sloth is also added to the carnage of blood. The Bible says that the slain of the Lord shall be in that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other. So the animal kingdom is preparing to enter into the house of slaughter. I'm just telling you, don't get emotional. I'm just a messenger. No reason to get all emotional. Okay? Let's keep going. <coughs> Let's go back to 2nd Ezra, 15 and 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. For the fire is gone forth from his wrath, and have consumed the foundations of the earth, and the sinners like the straw that is kindled. That is kindled. <coughs> so the sword of the Lord, he's talking about judgment. 
He's also coming back with the so-called UFOs that are going to be emitting concentrated high-energy laser fire, which is going to be preceded by nuclear missiles consuming the Earth, starting with Babylon. Let's go to Deuteronomy 13 and 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. For we have been seduce into worshiping the gods of the nations. We have been tricked into worshiping gods that are no gods, gods that cannot save, gods that cannot speak, gods that cannot deliver nor heal, nor save us in these days of trouble that are coming. We've been seduced by our mothers, by our fathers, by our brothers, by the wicked. Let's go to Baruch 1 and 21. The book of Baruch, chapter 1, verse 21. Nevertheless, we have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our God, according unto all the words of the prophets whom he sent unto us. The Lord is speaking to us in the last days. Turn ye from your wicked way, or ye shall die in your iniquities. So this is the ultimate display of love and mercy that we're being shown an opportunity to repent. We're being told about our ways. Stop eating abominations. Stop sleeping, sleeping with our brother's wife. Stop sleeping with our family members' wives or whatever the case may be. Stop committing adultery, basically. Okay, stop worshiping false gods. But there are cases where if there's an inheritance to be left and your brother pass away, in some cases, you can marry his wife. And I don't, I'm not gonna go there right now, that's another lesson. But what the Bible is against is adultery. It's going to keep it simple. <clears throat> Let's go back to Baruch. Baruch 1 and 21. Nevertheless, we have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our God, according unto all the words of the prophets whom he sent unto us. But every man follow the imagination of his own wicked heart, to serve strange gods and to do evil in the sight of the Lord our God. So many Jakes are still in this queen of heaven or Babylonian or spiritual Egypt spirit. Do what thou wilt. You can worship a God, a different God every day of the week. You see, I think the ancient Egyptians had about 2,000 gods, maybe 3,000. It's absolutely ridiculous. So there's this spirit of rebellion resident in Jake. They have taken on the uh, characteristics and, and traits of the strange woman, the lips of a strange woman, which is this harlot, which is the daughter of Babylon, false doctrines, idolatry, witchcraft. Do what thou wilt. Come as you are. I mean, it was taught that in the church. Yeah, a lot of our Jake men are weak and effeminate. I said it. We know because it's by your fruits, either a bearing tree with no fruit or rotten fruit, lies. Fruit of lies. Most of you men got to be eliminated from off the face of the earth for being weak and scared. You're doing absolutely nothing which makes you worthless. It burns me up. Let's go back here. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 15. For well, they counted all the idols of the heathen 
to be gods, which neither have the use of eyes to see, nor noses to draw breath, nor ears to hear, nor fingers of hands to handle. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. So Jake, you're worshiping a powerless entity. You're worshiping the works of men's hands. You're going to be seduced into getting a little mini idol into your hand or your forehead. You're already walking around dried up of thirst with your lips open and in desperate need of ointment and oil on your damn lips and can't close your damn mouth. Bugged out. Dried up of thirst, which means you have no knowledge. Walking around dry as the Sahara Desert and thirst for knowledge. But your eyes see your teachers. You got living waters running right by you in this desert. There is an oasis of wise counsel going out. And you walking by it talking about you thirsty. The water's right in front of you. What are you talking about? <coughs> they have eyes that cannot see. Ears that cannot hear. The trumpet is being blown. The alarm is going off. You on your third, fourth, fifth alarm, talking about you overslept. Well, it's high time to awake, Jake. Death is in the air. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 15. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods, which neither have the use of eyes to see, nor noses to draw breath, nor ears to hear nor fingers of hands to handle. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. For man made them, and he that borrowed his own spirit fashioned them. But no man can make a God like unto himself. So we were given the golden retriever, as spoken by the beloved elder Karatazak out of Las Vegas. A blonde-haired, blue-eyed golden retriever. And a lot of Jake still got that man in his heart. How do we know this? By your works. God loves everybody. We're all equal. I can come as I am with no backbone, with a blackened mouth strung up through my ear. Okay, and a damn kango on. And a rack of gold and silver in your damn mouth. Or that I can take the chip and be accepted as an android or an Autobot. Bug out of your damn mind, connect to Wi-Fi, and can't even control your thoughts. Talking about God will accept me as I am. Okay? So even you damn high-tech chimps are going to fall by the sword that have been connected into Wi-Fi. You got to go to. I'm just telling you. And those that are teaching it's okay to get hooked into this digital grid. Let's go to Deuteronomy 13 and 7. Yes, cyborg jakes, bugged out. You thought they were crazy before they got connected into the grid. Now they're crazy with them amplifiers and circuitry and capacitors. Real crazy now. Craziness times 10. Let's go to Deuteronomy 13 and 7. <coughs> High capacity bug outs. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, verse 7, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. So we don't, the most high don't give a damn if they're the gods of Far East Asia or if they're the gods of the Western Hemisphere. They're off. Even the miniaturized idols, digitized, Deuteronomy 13 and 8. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shall thou spare. Say what? Neither shall thou spare. Neither shall thou conceal him. So anybody telling us to go ahead and lie down with the beast. Go ahead and get penetrated by this man's miniaturized phallus. Go ahead and take a sea hip. They're not going to be shown mercy on this side. 
that starts with the bug outs of the house of Saul. Some of them have moved up in rank, calling themselves chief high priests and bugs out of their damn mind. Okay, I'm just telling you, you can have sex on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the full moon. Bug out. So some of them are coercing us to go off, <coughs> to go off. So when we read these scriptures, these start with Jake's that are crazy as hell. When we understand, how do we know that? Well, let's go here. I read it. Well, we'll read it again. Deuteronomy 13 and 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. So we got wicked leaders amongst Israel teaching us it's okay to deviate from what's written. And of course, the house of the wicked is going to be destroyed. Let's go here. See, let's go back to Deuteronomy 13 and 8. So no mercy to the bug outs of the house of Saul on this side. And ultimately, no mercy at all for the house of Edom. Deuteronomy 13 and 8. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him. Neither shall thou spare. Neither shall thou conceal him. So they're going to be destroyed in the open by fire. And some of them are going to fall by the sword openly. Deuteronomy 13 and 9. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of all the people. So judgment is to the house of the rebels and the house of the wicked. Let's go to, just go here. Let's go to Deuteronomy 20, Deuteronomy 7 and 9. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful power, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So if we love him, we keep his sayings, and we come to his everlasting word. His word endure forever to all generations. Let's go to Deuteronomy 7 and 10. And repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hate of him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. So the law, statutes, and commandments are not done away with. We were taught that so that we can stay good, happy slaves. Brother Gabar Ayash, serving Yahweh Shai. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 13. That whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. That's coming back. <coughs> so a sword is prepared for those that hate Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. A sword is prepared for those that lie down with the beast and take his mark. A sword is prepared for the witches that are helping to push these abominations, these contaminants in our lotion, our hair products, our toothpaste, our juice, baby food, water, and the air we breathe. So all of the wicked are going to be punished for their crimes. 
Matter of fact, somebody post that in Nahum. The Lord is slow to anger. It's Nahum 1, somewhere between 5 and 7. Nahum 1. The Lord does not acquit the wicked. He does not say, let bygones be bygones. Why you think he says there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked? That means you are indebted to him if you're not covered by the blood of the Lamb, which means doing his will. Then your own blood must pay the tab. Yup, or the Gabar Ayash, Nahum 1 and 2. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So he's coming with the clouds, the chariots of heaven, the so-called UFOs, and the wicked is reserved for the day of judgment, starting with the house of Israel. <coughs> Deuteronomy 7, let's go to verse 10 and repayeth them that hate him to their face, and destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments, and the statutes, and the judgments, which I command thee this day, to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. Deuteronomy 7 and 13. So we're coming back to the mercy by being taught what his expectations are. So this is a display of that eternal love for his people. He is remembered when he carried us on his wings when he delivered us out of ancient Egypt. So he is showing us that we are not forsaken or forgotten. When we were called a no people, now he's saying, these are my sons. These are my daughters. Bring my sons and my daughters from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. So he's showing us, I have not forgotten about you, Israel. Gather my tribes together unto me, the tribes of Jacob, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And I know I'm butchered it, but I'm, I'm butchered it, but I, I'm paraphrasing. <coughs> Read that again. Deuteronomy 7 and 13. Let's go back to 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep and the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. So the Holy Land is going to be given back to the Lord's elect. And the house of Israel is going to be fruitful and grow and multiply in the promised lands. Brother Antoine, John 15 and 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So this is what Yahweh Shai is saying. So this is a marriage. A marriage comes with vows. There are rules and, and do's and don'ts to this relationship. 
So we must remain faithful, loyal, not lie down with the gods of the other nations or commit spiritual fornication. So we must remain faithful because he is faithful. And notice he only says in the Bible that he loves Israel, Jacob, you so-called Negroes, Native Americans and Latinos. He only says that he loves you. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not the devil Jacob's brother? Yet I love you, saith the Lord, Jacob. You see, Jacob, and I'm paraphrasing. I know I butchered it. That's okay, though. We all study. Let's go to Deuteronomy 7 and 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. I thought we were all equal. I mean to learn that universal doctrine. We're all equal. God loves us all the same. Come as you are. Don't worry about coming back to the marriage contract, to the covenant. Just continue to do you. You lied to us, you KBs. But now we're coming back to our father. And the tabernacle of David is being resurrected from the valley of the dry bones. Okay? And you're losing sleep at night. Deuteronomy 7 and 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. So we're going to be fruitful and multiply. We're going to lie down in a pasture for grazing and roaming. We're going to be at peace and be at rest. And none of the, the beasts of the animal kingdom is going to make us afraid again. Philistines, Tyree, Zidon, cave beasts, East, Eastern India, or Elam, Elam, East Asia, Moab, Ammon, Edom, Amalek, the Tic Tac hats. None of the beasts of the animal kingdom are going to terrorize us again. Deuteronomy 7 and 14. Thou shalt be blessed. <laughs> Deuteronomy 7 and 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So the other nations are going to be cursed and afflicted. They're going to come to the Israelites for healing. They're going to come to the Israelites to get healed of leprosy, sicknesses, pains, aches. The Israelites are going to be the doctors, the priests. You see, so they're going to have to come to the nation of Israel or the tabernacle of David to get healed. The Israelites are going to be the doctors the lawyers, the kings. You see that? I know you saw that. So they're going to still be able to get sick, but not the nation of Israel. But you other nations are going to be getting jacked up, scratching hives and pus blisters, chicken pox, measles, sneezing, growing trees in your private areas, all types of craziness going on. The hell is this growing out of my, underneath my underarm? Well, we told you, those curses are coming on you now. Little spikes sticking out of your damn backside where it's burning you to go poop or hemorrhoid monsters. Brother Gabar Yash, Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. I told you, the Lord ain't playing. Hemorrhoids, chicken pox, measles. All right, you're going to get it. So you're going to have to come to the holy mountain to be healed, to the new government. <coughs> you're trading places. 
of the Gemara Dharma, Isaiah 60 and 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So you can't get healed unless you serve and be a good boy or a good servant for the nation of Israel. You're men, women, and children, or you're going to die in place. All right? And by the way, if you got a terminal illness, well, guess what? You're going to go to the grave with that terminal illness. Go ahead and let those trees continue to grow out of your nostrils. I'm just telling you, don't get upset. I'm just saying. Isaiah 60 and 13, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. For the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. So all the best trees and cedars and pines are going to be brought to help build up a new holy kingdom. So you nations, get ready for service. You can get you a goals membership card or planet fitness membership. You can start climbing trees and lifting bricks, just getting repetitions, lifting, lifting up bricks or hammering away at something. These are all skill sets of which you can acquire to help make you a good servant. I'm just telling you, you don't have to take my advice. I speak as a man right now. Let's keep going. Deuteronomy 7 and 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. So our women are going to be able to produce. They're not going to be sterile, all types of craziness going on. Or babies born like little monsters being born with two heads or two people joined together, some craziness. And they're not going to be born bugged out of their damn mind. Okay, they're going to come out in their right mind with the Holy Spirit in the womb of our wives. Okay, so they're going to produce good fruit from a holy, righteous vine. The, the remnant. Deuteronomy 7 and 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So I post Job 8 and 22, please. If I'm not mistaken. I think it's Job 8 and 22. So this also means what? No witches are going to be walking around, by the way, sprinkling shit in our food and water. A global elites have a council of witches that put stuff in our food, water, lotions, medicines, and pray demonic spirits into them. So these witches are going to be, they're going to be damn bird food or food for the fish. They're going to be grinded to powder. I'm just telling you, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm going to read it. Brother Gabar, yep, Job 8 and 22. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. Ooh, I love the Lord. Woo, man, his word. You see, so we're not going to be getting sick which is going to be put out of their miseries. And if there's a witch found amongst you heathen, bring her hither or the warlock, and they're going to become food for the fowls of the air. The simps are not going to be ruling, by the way. You simps, you're going to be done away with. So if you're a witch, get ready to be grinded to bird food or damn fish food. Let's read this. Exodus 22 and 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Hey, yo, man, that's a female. You simps got to go. 
You simps have got to go. You got to go. Let's read this again. Exodus 22 and 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So we're going to put wickedness out of the kingdom. Period. And that includes effeminate men. Because you're going to be protecting witches. We already know how you simps operate. Hey, yo, man, that's a female. Well, your ass can go too and be bird food. Exodus 22 and 19. Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. So that's literal, but also we can apply that spiritually in the last days. Being joined with the beast by his mark, being penetrated by his little miniaturized penis, for lack of better words, or phallus symbol. So you can also be joined with a beast that way from a spiritual sense. But the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the first response, so to speak, is literally lying down with beasts. Let's close out here. Isaiah 1 and 16. Oh, my voice is dry. So if you're taking the mark of the beast, you're committing spiritual fornication. And if you lie down literally with a beast. So sometimes there are manifold interpretations <clears throat> manifold interpretations let's go to Isaiah 1 and 16 wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil learn to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed judge the fatherless Plead for the widow. So a, a true judge is not seduced by you being a man or a female or how much money you make. Like the purple people eaters, if the price is right, they will accept you into their congregation. That makes them what? Male prostitutes. I'm just telling you. Don't get mad with me. I didn't write the book. But if you give up your your integrity or your intestinal fortitude and if you compromise your body because somebody's price is right or they got their pockets are deep, you're a male prostitute, purple people eaters. I'm just telling you. So they have succumbed to spiritual fornication and they have a warrant out for their arrest as long as the price is right. You Bob Parker Israelites or Bob Barker, whatever the hell's name is, you got to go to the house of purple people eaters. Yeah, the Bob Barker Israelites or male prostitutes. Your time is almost up. <coughs> $150 million Israelite congregation. Let's read this again. Isaiah 1 and 16. Wash you. Make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. So no respect of persons can sum this up. Stop being a Negro or an Afro-American. Talking about, yo, we boys, dog. What's up, my nigga, my nigga, you know? That's still of the world. You haven't been washed by the word or born again. A Negro wearing a purple cape. That's what we got a, a certain group called. I'm not going to say their name. Isaiah 1 and 18. <clears throat> Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Well, the true crimsonites are the red people. Crimson comes from crime or red. Those are those damn devils. If we really interrogate the scripture here and, and try to break it down, 
or what we can extrapolate from it. That's those damn devils, the red people, okay? But judgment starts with the purple people eaters of the house of Israel, all right? Male prostitutes that have been paid off to lie down with the beasts. Your ass got to go. I'm just telling you. And it's backed up by the word. So the Lord is saying, let us reason together. But you say, O house of Israel, O Lord, your way is not equal. Your ways are unequal. But you, you wicked ass niggas, your way is unequal. Let's read this again. Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So if we get washed by the word, we get purified and made white and dawn on the new covering and covering with his covering. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. So then we can walk amongst the congregation, white on white. Didn't nobody tell you this was an all white party? Negro, okay? So you can't come near dirty trying to rub elbows with those that have been sanctified and cleansed by the word. An all white party, okay? So we gotta repent and be born again and washed by the word of truth and purity and sanctity. Let's read two more scriptures. <clears throat> the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shall thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. No pity and no mercy, which means there is no peace, saith the Lord unto the wicked, okay, at all. So those that have enticed us to serve other gods, there's blood on your hands, and there is a large running invoice of unpaid debts to your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Deuteronomy 7 and 17, if thou shalt say in thine heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Deuteronomy 7 and 18. Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The Lord is going to raise up his men. And the Lord says, fear not. Remember what I did unto Pharaoh and Egypt. So the Lord has a rap sheet of destroying the wicked and dismantling the congregations of evil doers or dissemblers. So we have a power that we can fall back on that cannot lie, that cannot fail, that is built on victory and the pillars of wisdom. So we are to fear not. Because Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to crush the wicked and those that are joined hand in hand with their lovers, their slave masters, and that are in bed with the beasts. Thou shalt not lie down with the damn beasts. That starts with these devils' enterprise, this system, and it's literal. Let's read this and close out. A beloved brother, Bayan Gasharala, Sirach 21 and 9. The congregation of the wicked is like tow wrapped together, and the end of them is a flame of fire to destroy them. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. The water, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So he's going to make his teachers walking weapons of war. That's coming in the great and terrible day of the Lord's judgment. The wicked are reserved unto that great and terrible day of darkness. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. 
All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. The water Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For this extension of mercy, he's extending out his hand and saying, it's time to come home, Israel. It's time to come back unto him, Israel. It's time to make haste and repent and make reconciliations together. He says, come and let us reason together. He's showing love by opening up his heart, his mind, which is his word. Okay, a regular heart beats blood. So he's opening up his mind, which is his will unto us by bestowing upon us his holy word. The tabernacle of David is being raised up from the ashes and from the graves of gross darkness and ignorance by being a good old happy boy and a simp to, to the sons of the living God from a no people to Yasha Allah, Yasharala. Okay? It's time to rise up. Calm Yasharala. Calm Yasharala. Calm Yasharala. And the Babakata, Rakatam. And the DTA, Abad Baba. Bubba Kasha, Shalakwayam. Abad Baba, Bubba Kasha. We ought to be saying that every day to this wicked pedo queendom. And if we're not chanting down this pedo queendom with spiritual right hand curses daily, then we're not praying. We're only doing about a 90% prayer. Okay? But to seal the deal, a curse to put the cherry on top. Shalom.